welcome back. Today we're going to mount the Z-axe um, rods. We've just got some 10 mil rod and we're going to cut it to length. So first step we're just going to clean up one of the ends. So I'm just what we're going to do is hacksaw off this little end piece just to get it all, all the same diameter and then we'll cut them to length. So I'm just going to go outside now and hacksaw them off and grind the ends a little bit. We're going to install the one of the Z axes and cut it to length. So I've just got my 10 mil rod that we just cleaned up. Just push it down into the printer. Make sure it's hitting the base, and we'll just mark the top. Just with a pen. And then we'll just cut that with a hacksaw and clean up the end again like we did with the with the other end. Okay, so we've got both our rods cut to length, both our Z-axis rods, and we're just going to install them. So all we're going to do is just push them in. We're not going to do anything else. At the moment, we don't have to clamp them in, because we'll be pulling them out a few times later. Next, we're going to set up the Y-axis motors. So we've grabbed a couple of um, NEMA 17s. And we've just grabbed some of the shorter ones because these uh, don't need to be very strong. So the shorter they are generally, the weaker they are. And we're just going to pull the connector out. They've got a little connector on the end. And we're going to actually solder some wires onto this. So that'll be the next step. And these are the wires we're going to use. I've, we've just got uh, about a one meter of, of um, network cable. This is the multi-strand stuff again, not the solid core. And we're going to twist this together, so I'll just do that now before we solder it onto that connector. You need four wires for the motors. So just try and keep them apart and then just twist them up. So we're just going to twist the whole thing up like that and then we're going to solder it on. Okay, before we start soldering, we just need to check the the pinout on the motor because some of these are actually uh, different. So what we're going to do is just use a multimeter set on ohms to measure the resistance of the windings. And usually, usually the windings are across pins one, three, four, and six. But sometimes the middle two pins three and four are swapped around, which is probably the case with this little motor. So we're just going to put put the, one of the probes on the end pin and just probe the center pins. Now usually you would you would see someone pin one you usually you would see pin one and three you would have a low resistance under 20 ohms in this case it doesn't so it's probably on pin four so you can see we've got 13 ohms across pin one and pin four so that's one of the windings and we'll just go from pin six to pin three that's where we expect the other winding to be so there you go you've got 13 ohms on that winding so that's one winding there pins one and and four and pin 6 and 3 is the other winding. So we're going to solder wires onto those. Or onto the little connectors anyway. So we can use those, those specific pins. So we'll do that next. So now we're going to just prep these connectors for soldering. So we grab the two connectors from the motors and we're going to cut off pins 1 and 5 because we're, they're not needed. Oh, sorry, not pins 1 and 5, pin 2 and 5. Don't cut off pin 1. So pin 2 and pin 5. So you can just see so those two are being cut off. I'll just see if that focuses. And do the same for the other connector. So there you can see it there. Okay, so before we're going to solder, I'm just going to strip the wires back like this one. I've got a pair of wire strippers, but you can use side cutters too. So just going to Strip back about six to eight millimeters. And twist it up. And we'll need to do the same on the other cable as well. So this is the cable we're going to solder onto. Just separate all your wires. Just strip those back. So it's 
that's ready I'll grab some heat shrink next okay so grab some heat shrink we're just going to cut a little bit cut probably about 15 20 mils just to cover the join just to cover that the bare wire and we're going to cut four of those pieces okay so next we're just going to feed those bits of heat shrink onto the wire and probably just do one one at a time so they tend to fall off okay so we're just going to tin those wires up and we'll start with the orange one that we've already just prepped with the heat shrink the heat shrink's around 3 mil by the way 2 mil probably would have been better just attach it so the next wire see the two orange wires are going to be one of the windings so I'm going to put it across to the other other side of that winding so pin one and four and then the two greens are going to go on the other winding and I already forgot to put the heat shrink on slide up your heat shrink and hopefully it shrinks enough I don't have any 2 mil at the moment grab a heat gun that seems to look right and that's ready okay so we've got the wires all, all set up and uh, heat shrunk and, and we'll twist that up again so what I've got here are a couple of rubber bushes off the printers. These come off the rods and it's got probably around about a 6 mil hole in it and it's a good sort of 30 mils long, 35 mils long and I've selected these because they fit snugly over this, um, this motor cog so it fits nicely on there and we're going to use that as a coupler to couple to the threaded rod, the 6 mil threaded rod. So I'm not too sure what we're going to do with the other end yet. So the threaded rod's probably going to be a little bit loose on this end. So this is these are pretty much ready to go onto the onto the printer next. Okay, so we've got um, got some rubber for the motors. So we're going to cut a piece of rubber, probably the width of the motor. This is actually just a piece of inner tube tire from a from a bike from a mountain bike. So probably cut it about um, 30 mils. like so, and just cut it open and we're just going to wrap it around the motor like so, and just plonk it into one of the one of the Z-mount holes inside of the printer here and all, all the rubber is supposed to do is just stop the vibration and also just stop the motor from spinning around in there and clanking around in there. So we'll cut another piece for the other motor and we'll move on to the next step. Okay so we've got a uh, 606 ZZ bearing so it's just a 6mm bearing, it's an internal hole 6mm. I'm going to press that into the top of the, the Z axis uh, bracket. So just put it on there, usually you can just push it in by hand but you, if it doesn't go in easily you can press it in with some uh, vice grips or, or a clamp. So that's, that's put in and do the other side and then we'll fit some 6 mil rods into it. Right, so we've organised some uh, M6 threaded, threaded rod and we're just going to cut that to length now. So we're just going to pop it through our Z axis, through the bearing that we just installed and just run it right down to the top of the motor. And what we'll do is cut it off about 10 to 15 mil above the bearing and it'll give us a little bit of space to put a, uh, a lock nut on the top because what will happen is the rod will actually be under tension it'll be hanging from the top bearing so we'll just mark it off and then we'll cut two rods okay we've got, uh, got a nylock nut, our M6 nylock nut and we're just going to put it on the end of the rod that we just cut 
So just grab some vice grips. So we're going to hold the rod with a pair of vice grips. I'm going to hold it in a position where it's not going to damage. Well, we are going to damage the thread, but it's not going to matter too much. I'm going to hold it up near the end, the other end. And then we'll just, just put that nut on. Probably about 10 mil. And then we're going to install it. So you'll need to thread it up from the bottom. Through the bearing. And we're, we're just going to plunge it into that coupling. So we're going to force it into the rubber. We need quite a bit of force. So that's it, it's installed. And do the same for the other side. Okay, so the last step is we're just going to put an M6 nylock nut on the top and, and just tighten it down so it just sits on top of the bearing and just basically puts a little bit of tension on the rod. So I'm just going to grab the rod at the bottom with the vice grips so it doesn't spin and it's going to tighten that nut down. So it doesn't matter if the motor is a little bit suspended, it's fine. And that's good, and it's done. We'll do the same on the other side.